Sour Colvin. Time to talk energy recycling. For that, I welcome our energy coordinator, Richard Elwick. Richard, good morning. Good morning to you, Sarah. Nice uh, to see you again, nice as always. Nice to see you as well. Thank you always, as, as always, for, for coming in to join us. So today we are talking about recycling. We're going to start with textile recovery. And I know I say this all the time. I have a bunch of bags in my spare room of clothes that, you know, maybe my dogs have chewed on or those missing socks. And I'm a big recycler. I hate throwing things away. But I know that I can't really put my, re my recycled textiles in the recycling bin with my plastics and paper and all that business. So tell me a little bit about this. I guess this, there's a statewide initiative underway uh, to, to recycle more textiles. There is. Um, uh, the Town of Barnstable is going to be partnering with three other entities, uh, the Mass Department of Environmental Protection, the Secondary Materials and Recycled Textiles Association, and that is a tongue twister, and then the Council for Textile Recycling as well. And working together with all of these uh, different entities, uh, the town is hoping to reduce the amount of textiles that goes into its trash. As I think we've talked about uh, on, on numerous occasions, it costs uh, quite a bit of money for us to throw away our trash. Uh, approximately, actually, very specifically, $65 a ton uh, for, for trash disposal. Actually, it's $55 a ton uh, for the disposal fee and then $12 a ton for transportation. So it's actually $67 a ton for all of the trash we dispose of. So every bit of recycled materials we can keep out of the trash, uh, no matter what kind of recycled materials it is, it reduces the amount of trash we've got to pay to dispose of because it, under our current contract, uh, we're not spending anything to dispose of our recycles. So, that, so that's, that's really the, uh, the, the goal here. And, and I, I think it's always interesting for folks to hear some of the, some of the details, some of the specific facts Definitely. associated with things. And, I, and I'll sort of read these off uh, rather quickly. 85% of the textiles typically get thrown away, wow. which is a huge amount. And they mainly end up in, of course, uh, our incinerators and our landfills. Uh, about 230,000 tons a year, that is, gets thrown away. Uh, and uh, what I think a lot of people don't understand is 95% of all of these textiles can be recycled or really? reused in one way or another. 6% um, of all of the waste that ends up in our transfer station uh, typically and at our landfills and then gets uh, incinerated in many cases. These are textiles. So you can see that there's an awful lot of opportunity here to, to get the kinds of things out of our uh, trash stream um, that cost us money and, and that can truly be recycled. I know we've, we've got a, a poster that we'll be showing shortly that uh, sort of goes into some detail about the uh, kinds of things that yeah. uh, we can include. And, and basically you can see that list essentially includes every kind of te textile you can imagine. Absolutely. Um, the only things uh, that we uh, are not able to put into our uh, textiles uh, are uh, the kinds of things that ultimately will end up in the swap shop, um, oily rags, anything that's dirty or mildewed. We actually uh, do take uh, carpets at the landfill, but they're not uh, uh, put mm. to be put in where the uh, the, uh, uh, textiles the textiles are located. Yeah. So you can see uh, essentially everything else uh, is fine. Um, and we have a location at the transfer station. I think a lot of people are not really uh, aware of it. We've got uh, uh, four or five bins that are located behind the recycled area, a little bit hard to find. Uh, and certainly after we uh, uh, finish the redesign of the transfer station, which will happen over the next year or so, things will be much more efficiently placed. But for the time being, uh, we do have a location, and I, and I think we'll have one more slide maybe that just uh, we'll be able to use to show people uh, the bins, the containers that will receive all the recyclables that, that you want to put there. So sure. that, that's what we're hoping people will do. Um, you know, we know that, uh, you know, we all operate uh, from patterns. We get used to doing things. And, uh, and for many of us, it can be easier just to throw it away. Right. But uh, when you think about the implications of that, you think about the, the ability to reuse so many of these products uh, and then to save uh, the ratepayers at the transfer station uh, a little bit of money to reduce the cost of disposal, it really it's a win-win a, a situation all the way around. So we're, we're hoping folks uh, will participate that to, with the program. We're going to be putting out posters around town just to remind people uh, about this issue and about the, uh, the textile recovery initiative. and, and uh, one of the other reasons that I'm doing this is that uh, by participating in this program, we can increase the grant money that we get from MassDEP as well. Wonderful. So that's, that's another side benefit. So uh, we're excited about the program, uh, looking forward to seeing people participate. 
try to make it as easy as we can, uh, explain it to people and, uh, and keep reminding them and, and hopefully it'll, it'll be uh, a success all the way around. Fantastic. So Richard, uh, do people have to have a, a transfer station sticker or a recycling sticker to be able to uh, participate in this Very, uh, this very initiative? good question. Very, very good question. And it is the case uh, that for all of the uh, residents who want to use a transfer station, we do now require uh, either a trash sticker or a recycling only sticker. So uh, currently if you want to just recycle, all you need is that no cost recycled only sticker. So that, that's a good question and, and it's uh, important for people to know that so we don't get folks from out of town or people who haven't purchased a sticker coming there for that Excellent. purpose. Excellent. And then one more question about the recycling yes. is that should it, is it okay for them to be in like plastic bags? I'm thinking like all of the, you know, the, the textiles that I have been kind of hoarding, um, I guess, is, is it, they're all in plastic bags. Is that okay? Is that's that how fine. you want that's them to That's fine. Be? Uh, when these uh, textiles go to the different locations of different uh, nonprofits typically, or, and there are some for profits as well, um, it, it's a little bit uh, easier for them to cull through those bags, unlike uh, trash bags that end up at the trans, uh, not so much the transfer station, but in recycling right. areas, because uh, when they uh, get to the sorting machines uh, at the different facilities that uh, uh, sort the recycled materials, the trash bags actually, uh, and the plastics in general, are one of the challenges for these right. sorting machines. So yes, and, and for purposes of textile recovery, uh, uh, the textiles can be kept in the plastic bags when they're put into the bins. Good to know. Okay, I know what I'm doing this weekend. All right. Down to the transfer station. Sounds good. Um, so Richard, um, let's talk about buy recycled. I think this is really great. You know, as we, we talk, there's there's so many things that we need here in town. I think many businesses need um, that, you know, you end up buying new, but there are many things that you can buy recycled. And tell me a little bit about this uh, particular initiative. Well, um, for some time, uh, the town of Barnstable had a buy recycle policy in place. But last year, for the very first time, uh, we actually formalized the, po uh, the policy and the town manager uh, signed it and it was distributed to all uh, department heads and those who were responsible for, for uh, procuring uh, all of the, the kinds of goods that, that we procure mm -hmm. around town, uh, primarily paper products, but, but all kinds of different products. Even, even office furniture can be, uh, can be purchased uh, that is of a recycled nature. But sure. I, I think uh, with respect to the kinds of things that, that we're hoping that uh, staff will will undertake as they do this uh, and also to understand that we're not requiring that in every case recycled uh, products be purchased. There, there are a couple of guidelines because in, in, in some cases uh, it, it can be challenging to find recycled products. There are a couple of exceptions. Uh, we uh, are certainly not requiring, to, uh, requiring that people purchase recycled products if it takes too long to obtain it and right. you can, you can uh, obtain a non-recycled product a little bit more quickly. Uh, if you can't uh, make a determination that from a performance standard perspective, the recycled product equals the non-recycled product, then, then, of, then of course we're, we're not requiring that a lesser standard uh, product be purchased. And, and again, the cost is another issue. Um, we're, we're asking uh, staff to procure to the maximum, uh, maximum amount practicable based on the cost as well. So if it's, if it's much more expensive to purchase a recycled product, we're not uh, expecting you know, staff to do that. Uh, that would sort of be unreasonable. Right. We want this policy to be reasonable. We want people to, to, to look at it in a positive way. And if it's overly burdensome, you know, that, that won't be the case. And, and actually, this is another element of uh, our relationship with the Mass DEP, the Mass Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, this is part of their requirement package uh, if you're applying for grants. So this is something that, uh, again, was, was ongoing for some time. Uh, I was so excited to have uh, uh, Joanna Boucher and, and David Anthony support it, and the town manager, of course, as I said, signed it last year. So this is something that has support uh, in, with upper management, and uh, once a year we, we send out a reminder to staff that procure uh, all of the different goods and services that, that this in, is indeed our policy, and, and we want you to take it seriously. And, uh, and it, it's a, it can be a little bit challenging tracking the success and the progress of sure. it. And that's, that's sort of an ongoing effort that we're, we're, we're attempting to fine tune to, to, to have it be more than just please go out and do it and then you never find out wh how effective it's been. So exactly. we're, we're, we're working on developing an, an effective way to, to track and measure those things as well. But I, I think the main thing is for staff to know that whenever they're going to go out and buy goods and services, do their best to buy recycled products. Make sure the uh, the paper that you buy is at least 30% post-consumer recycled material. Um, I mean, those are the kinds of things that we're worried about. Uh, make sure there's a recycling uh, symbol on the on the materials that you do purchase. Sure. That's another component uh, of the 
policy and as well along with what we buy just in general how do we reduce paper right. that we use uh, electronic mail is always something now that people use more and more uh, double siding your printing uh, something that we don't automatically do right. but in almost every case it's the more efficient way the more uh, environmentally uh, appropriate way yeah. to, to work with our paper but again you kind of need to be reminded every so often absolutely well uh, that reminded me so I think double siding our paper uh, and thinking less about printing out emails is something that we can probably uh, put into place right now here on bars no School. question about it good stuff well Richard I thank you so much uh, for coming by my pleasure thank you Richard Elric is our energy coordinator joining us here on Barnstable this morning I'm Sarah Colvin